Hi everyone, Paul here over at Pyramind, and in this video, this week, I'd like to give you a few tips to help you beef up your guitar tracks. So I have a couple of different examples to show you, and we'll talk about what we can do with them. So in the first session I have here, I've um, got basic drums, bass, and guitar, acoustic guitar. I just have the, the single track at the moment, and um, I'd like to beef this up a little bit, give it a little more stereo widening. Um, so, with my, I get this question a lot from many of my students, and why can't I just double the track? Well, let's do that. So I'll take the acoustic guitar track, and we'll go to Track, Duplicate, and duplicate everything with that track, and listen to the, the, the one on its own first. And now we'll add in the second. And really what that's doing is it's just making it louder. It's the same waveform, it's the same audio file, just doubled, it's just making it louder. It isn't really thickening up the tone any, at all. Uh, one thing you can try is called the Haas trick, which um, if you delay one of the audio clips by anything between 20 and 40 milliseconds, you get this smearing effect. And if you pan them hard left and hard right, it actually gives you some stereo width. So let me demonstrate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the second one. I'm gonna to go to my nudge factor up here at the top. And I'm gonna go into minutes and seconds and I'll try 30 milliseconds. And I'm just gonna nudge it by hitting the plus key on my numeric keypad. And you sort of move a little bit. Now let's play the two together. Sounds a bit funny. Let's part. So let's play the two together. I'm going to pan one hard left and the other hard right. So that's giving you a little stereo width, and it's kind of simulating how we hear things in the real world. We, there's a slight time delay between we, where we hear things in our left ear and our right ear, and that gives us a sense of location. Um, the trouble with using this effect sometimes is that you can get phasing. If I pan this, the left and right into the center, You can definitely hear these are going in and out of phase, and that can be a problem sometimes in your mix. So I'm going to abandon that idea for the moment, hide and make inactive. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this track. Track delete. And a good way to thicken up the guitar is to simply just play it again, double it. So let's bring in another take and unmute that. So here's, here's one on its own. and with an additional recorded take on top of that. Pan one hard left and the other hard right. And you can hear how it's a thicker, thicker tone. There's more stuff going on and what, what What's happening here is the, the inconsistencies in the performance, the timing difference and difference in dynamics, that actually thickens up the tone. Let's hear it in the track now. I'm gonna group these two tracks together. So that I can manipulate them together. Let's go back to one. And then the two together. So you can hear how, in this case, there's more stereo complexity, and I feel like this method is a good way to achieve that. Let's look at something else now. Okay, here we have something very different. I've gone to my stock metal guitar riff library of my mind um, because it amuses me. Um, 
and we have this. Okay, very early 80s, new wave of British heavy metal stuff. Um, single guitar, drums, and bass. Now, again, with thickening up this tone, rather than duplicating it or and trying to avoid phase complications with the Huss effect, doubling it. So I'm going to bring in another guitar and unmute it. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Let's pan it hard left and hard right. And you're starting to get that tone right. So as I said, those tiny inconsistencies in performance and timing really do thicken up the tone. Um, this, this method was used a lot for those early Metallica albums, everything through Master of Puppets, it was all double tracked, triple tracked. I, I've heard uh, the guitars, the rhythm guitars were overdubbed, the same riff overdubbed six to eight times just to get that tone really thick. Um, I've got some more here we can add just to see how that, how that sounds. <laughs> Right, so you're gonna hear how it's getting thicker and thicker. You, you gotta be careful though not to overdo it because it can get muddy very quickly. Um, so what you might wanna think about doing, and actually what hasn't been done in this case, this is all exactly the same sound, uh, the same guitar sound recorded four times over each other. Um, but a good way to thicken up the sound, rather than adding too many layers, is to vary the sound of each guitar very slightly. And you'll actually be surprised at how far that will go, even with just two guitars layered, panned hard left, hard right. Change the sound somewhat on one of them. Either choose a different pickup on the guitar, choose a different guitar, different amp, or different mic placement settings, or even a different mic. All these things you'll be surprised how much that little variation will play in the mix overall. So there's my quick tip for today. Layering guitars with multiple performances to thicken up the tone. Um, so that's it for now. Um, if you want to see more videos, there's the Pyramide blog, but until then, see you next time.